Getting ready to braise some short ribs. So in these aluminum pans, on the bottom we put carrots, celery, onion, and garlic. And in here I've made my own seasoning mix. Um, salt, pepper, smoked paprika. I use a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg. Um, lemon zest, uh, dry oregano, and we are going to use red wine and put these short ribs into the pan. And they're gonna go low and slow for around mm, six hours. Baby carrots. We're gonna roast these with olive oil, salt, and pepper. So you can buy them, they look just like this. Pull them down, cut them in half, um, putting them in a big bowl. And olive oil, salt, and pepper, like I said, hot oven 400, so you kind of want to not char them, but get a little color and crisp on them. Taking our seasoning rub and really coating the meat all over. We used a little bit of red wine on the bottom of our roasting pans and the extra seasoning mix will just be poured right on top, covered with aluminum foil and in the oven. What do we have here? Polenta cakes. So I made polenta and I put it in one of these aluminum dishes to cool. Then I took a ring mold and I cut and formed these cakes. And now I'm getting butter on. I'm gonna get this pan super hot and I'm gonna pan sear them so that they get a really nice crust on them. And this is actually gonna be served with our um, short ribs tonight and our baby carrots that are in the oven. Nice, warm, hearty winter dish. Pan's hot, butter's in there. Putting these cakes in. I use a non-stick rubber spatula. I'll show it to you in a second to um, flip them. So doing around a minute and a half on each side, this is the spatula, and I have my sheet pan ready for them to come off once I flip them. But it's all about being set up and ready, all in the prep. We are cleaning these beautiful scallops. Um, I put down towels to dry them so some of the moisture comes out before we pan fry them. But I just wanna show you how when you get a scallop, there's a little muscle on it, it's kind of chewy. Sorry, that's blurry. But you want to just pull them right off and then towel dry them, paper towel dry them, and we're gonna season them on here before we start pan searing them. Um, these are some beautiful scallops for today's appetizer. Let's get cooking. Got a big pan on, high heat right now, getting it real hot, and we're gonna make a warm cabbage. Um, we have pancetta that I have, small diced here. We're gonna render the fat down, then saute some garlic and onion. Yes, that is butter back there, because it's gonna be added in to finish up and we just julienned real thin the cabbage. This is gonna be going with our scallop appetizer today. Adding that in, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna get a spoon, a spoon so I don't burn my hands, but we're gonna start rendering down the fat. Um, this is gonna give so much flavor, and that's the reason, wanna keep a note to yourself, do not add salt and pepper till the end, because the pancetta holds so much salt. Um, if you don't wanna use pancetta, you can use bacon, you can use a sausage, um, even a chorizo is fine. The pancetta, though, in my opinion, is the best flavor with the cabbage. So this whole process is very fast. You want to keep moving it around with a wooden spoon so that the pancetta crisps up, but it does not burn. The flavor all is in the fat that's rendering down. So now we're going to add our onions and garlic. Onions and garlic are in, threw the butter in. I'm going to get this sweating down. Soften those onions up. Oh my God, it smells so good. Um, I love the smell of bacon and, and like pancetta and salty meats getting sauteed with butter. Every fat girl is dreaming this bowl right here. All right, all the butter is almost melted. I don't want the butter to get too brown. Um, I'm not looking for that super nutty flavor. So I have white wine ready and we're gonna deglaze that pan. Before we add in our tab, we can put the lid on for a little bit so it starts to saute down. This is our white wine. I just want to show you guys what like the consistency of the broth is because it's at a nice simmer right now. The butter and the wine makes like this nice creamy, velvety texture. Um, and it has in here the pancetta. I'm not going to add any seasoning, but I am going to add the cabbage in right now. Put the lid on and get it sweating down. And then once it cooks down, we will taste it, salt and pepper it up. So I'll it all together, coating the cabbage really well. Then we're going to put the heat on low and put the lid on. The lid's gonna help the cabbage start to wilt down because it's almost in a steaming method. 
now that everything's been sauteed. Let's talk about these scallops. We're gonna get them ready to sear. I've had them on the towels drying, seasoned them with salt and pepper, both sides. And I get these from Lusty Lobster, that's in Highlands, down by the marina. Uh, they are excellent, they work with you. I mean, I'm not trying to put a plug here, but you go and set up for rewards. I got an email saying they had scallops, that's why I went and picked them up. And they were fresh, they are beautiful. You get rewards points towards stuff when you use like a, like a ShopRite kind of method where you put your phone number in and I've gotten discounts already. So nice, nice product, worth the price. I don't know where you're located. I'm in Shrewsbury, this is in Long Branch. We just drive right over to Highlands, but we love Lusty. Let's get these flipped over, look at that. Oh yeah, baby, we love a good hard sear on our scallops. And you know they're good, you know why? Look, there's not a lot of water in my pan. A lot of times you buy these frozen scallops, and as soon as you start to cook them, all the liquid comes out, and it's almost like you're poaching them in the, and they're horrible. <laughs> so these are, look at that sear. So I just wanna show you, we seared all the scallops, and in these pans right now is all the flavor to make an amazing sauce. So, I'm gonna take a little bit of the butter that we have left over, and we're gonna get it in this pan to melt down. I know it looks like a lot of butter, but we have a lot of scallops that we have to sauce on each plate. So, butter in the pan, so it starts to melt. And then over here, you can just see, while the last set was searing, I juiced these lemons. So, what's gonna happen is the butter's gonna melt, we're gonna pour the lemon juice on it, and I'm gonna take my spoon and scrape all of that caramel delicious flavor that's in the pan into our sauce, pull it off. I'm gonna keep it separate because when I go to serve the scallops, this is the sauce that I'm gonna drizzle right on top of. And it's gonna be beautiful. It is, we'll have like a little golden caramel color to it. When, once the lemon juice with the acid hits this, um, I also use salted butter to do this, and I season the scallops with salt and butter, so right now I will not season it with any kind of salt and pepper. All right, who's ready for the lemon juice? Yeah, there we go. I will strain this through a cheesecloth for China Cat, China Cat, to get away the grittiness and just have all the flavor. I combine them both into one pan. Look at that. Ooh, I get so excited over things like this. So we just took the cabbage off. And it is perfect. Honestly, perfect. I chopped up some fresh parsley in it. And what I'm gonna do now is steam it's like a little fresh that I'm getting um, wafting the smell in it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I have some extra pangetta. I'm gonna julienne it, put the fryer on, and deep fry it to crisp up. I'm gonna use it as a garnish. So we're gonna put the cabbage down first, the scallops, drizzle a little sauce, and then fried pancetta at the top. Get hungry. Just took the meat out of the oven. We are going to pull the actual meat off, let it rest so that we can slice it up and pull it apart because it's like, hold on a second, you can just see, it is falling falling apart and we're gonna make a sauce out of all the veggies and liquid on the bottom this is everything that's on the pull the bay leaves out but um, this is all those cooked veggies in our wine and oil so I'm putting it in a blender you do not want to discard this I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make the most amazing sauce out of it blend time I know it looks like baby food I'm gonna strain it see on our strainer so I'm gonna do this a couple times for all the veggies and I'm gonna let this just sit it's going to pass through here for our next step. So multitasking, blending the next batch up in here, using the ladle, not over look. In here, using the ladle to push through the puree so we can start getting it nice and smooth. And then we'll add this to our mix. We're gonna get this on with some stock and make a beautiful sauce for our short ribs. I pulled the short ribs apart, kind of put them in my tray. Now this is all the sauce puree. What I'm going to do is, and I've let it set for a little bit, I'm going to skim the fat like this off the top because we don't want any of that. And I'm disregarding that. And I'm going to pour this on top of my tray with the short ribs. 
cover it, and then later we would just hit it, heat it in the oven. It's gonna heat in the sauce, and all the flavor is obviously in the sauce where that was our marinade, our veggies pureed down, and it went through the china cap so it's nice and smooth. Just let me show you how it's. I'm just gonna keep straining the fat off the top. I just don't like that greasy flavor to it. It comes off, it'll be nice and creamy to go on the short rib.